What's happening guys? We are back for another video. Today we're talking about DaVinci Resolve 17. I don't know if you guys caught the uh, stream that they had did there on November 9th, but man, there is some cool features that they're going to have coming out in DaVinci Resolve 17. And actually, you can already go and download it because I already got it. It's a beta version, but you know what? I'm just jumping right in and uh, going to start working with it because it just looks that good. I mean, there's just so many cool features in there. So I just made a note of a few things that I think are really cool. I can't call it my top five or my favorite five because there's so much good stuff in there that it's just going to take time to get in and dig through and uh, kind of find out, you know, what is really the best, you know? So let's get right into it. The first thing that I want to mention here that I think is really cool is just how they've kind of changed around the interface a little bit. So I've gotten lots of questions in the past about, hey, can I uh, preview the transition before I dump it on my clips? Or can I preview what a title is going to look like? And the answer was always no, you can't preview it. You just got to dump it in the timeline and see how it looks. Well, now you can preview it, which is awesome. I mean, what a great tool, you know? I mean, I've got titles and stuff that, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know what they look like. I got to dump them in the timeline, check them out. But let's jump in Resolve. I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to preview these things, which is uh, super awesome and super helpful. All right, so we're in a new project here, DaVinci Resolve 17 Public Beta. And I've got my effects library open here. If you click on the top effects library right here, that'll open this up for you. And right now I've got just two clips in my timeline. And you can see if I have my video transition selected here and I just come to any of them, let's see, and I just kind of scroll across the transition, it gives you a preview of the transition. Oh man, that is so sweet because, you know, a lot of times you might be working through and you're like, I don't know what I want to do, but now you can just scroll through and it's going to show you exactly what the transition would look like if you dropped it on your clips. Awesome and super helpful. And there's even other transitions now that they've added which are cool. You've got brightness, you've got camera shake, you've got uh, crash zooms. I mean, there's just so much stuff in here that is awesome that I'm looking so forward to trying out. You even have really cool ones like this one right here, burn away. Look at this. Look at that. How cool is that, right? So cool. And it's nice that it's already built in. You don't have to go and create this stuff. You can preview it before you even dump it on your clip. And it's just awesome. I mean, I love this feature right here. One of the next things, if you come down into your titles here, so we used to have titles and you had to dump it in your timeline, right? Now, if you just hover over it and scroll across, let's see, that one doesn't move. Let's come down to the Fusion title here. Scroll across, you're going to see a little preview of what that text looks like. And you can do it with any one of your texts. Look at that. You even got a call out. We didn't have a call out before. You had to make it yourself. Now we got it. And let's say I wanted to see a sample of, you know, a title while I'm working on my clip. Come up here, click on this little icon. So you got both your viewers open. Scroll back and forth and you can see a little sample of your text. And one reason I really like this is because if you come down to here, we've got different names here and I've got a bunch of Messiah titles and I never know what all these do. I just got to drag one, drop it in, see if I like it. But now, boom, dude, I can preview it. And this is awesome. Just going to be a time saver and just make it easier to figure out what exactly you want your clip to look like when you dump on a title or a transition or any of that kind of stuff. Jumping into the effects, you also have new effects here. You've got uh, adjustment clips and fusion compositions, which we've always had, but you've got things like binoculars. So if I hover over the clip, oh dang, there's me in binoculars, right? You got closed circuit TV. Look at these things you got going on here. You don't even have to make it. It's already in there. You got a digital glitch. Again, my computer's probably a little uh, dog and trying to keep up here, but uh, you've got all kinds of cool stuff here that now you can play with some night vision. It's just awesome that it's A, that easy, B, they added it in, and see, did I already say it's that easy? Because it's just that easy. Awesome. Awesome. So not only can you see these effects in a different way, they look different on the screen here. You can preview it. But if you just scroll through and you look at like, say your audio effects and things like that, it's got a different look to it too, similar to how uh, these effects and transitions look and titles. So take a look at this over here in DaVinci Resolve, click on Fairlight. Look at this. We've got all these different uh, effects here. You can see it clear. They've got nice little symbols on what it does. And they've even added in some new ones like the surround analyzer pretty cool. So if you haven't been paying attention, we've been working through an audio series here, and I'm going to be going through every single one of those uh, effects there on how they work, what they do, and how they affect your clip. So definitely subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified when I put out a new video, and you'll be up to date in our audio series. So uh, that's something that we've been working through, and I think it's going to be really cool too. The next thing I wanted to talk about is how now you can sync up multiple clips in your timeline. So this is super helpful uh, for me. A lot of times I'm doing a screen recording. I'm also recording on my camera over there. And I use the audio from my Blue Yeti here to sync up with my video on my camera, but it's being recorded by ScreenFlow. So there's a little bit of syncing that I generally have to do there. 
And it's pretty easy. I usually can do it right in the media pool where I can just sync the audio by waveform. But what's even better now is when I have little clips from my 5D Mark IV and I've got a long screen recording, but I want to cut to me talking, you know, in between the screen recording, we can just sync that up super quick right in the timeline. I don't have to manually do it because typically I would have to go through and manually set my video of me talking here and line it up with my screen recording. So let's jump in and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so here it is. I've got uh, my screen recording underneath here. Let's just uh, show one screen here and make this a little bigger, clean things up. So I've got my screen recording here and generally I'll put that on my uh, first track. And then I've got a part where I jump in and, you know, tell you about something that I'm, that I'm talking about. Typically I would have to take this, you know, find the right spot, line it up and kind of do it that way. But now if I just select both clips, I can right click and I can come to auto align clips and I'm going to do based on waveform. I'm going to click that. It's going to run its little analyzation here and it should line it up perfectly for us. Just waiting because my computer's slow. Who wants to see a Mac guy build a PC? I'm really thinking about it. Going with a monster PC, you know, because the Macs are so expensive. Waiting for the new silicon ones. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So there we go. It synced them right up. Let's jump in. Let's zoom in here and just kind of see. Look at that. Our waveforms are perfectly lined up. This tool and being able to do this is going to save so much time when you've got to cut together, you know, a bunch of different clips that, that you could sync it this way is just awesome. So let's play through just hear how it sounds real quick. Is where, say there's something that doesn't sound so... So that sounds like it's lined up pretty good. Typically what I would do is I would use the audio from my screen recording because that's recording my Blue Yeti. So I would come into my video clip here, bump, drop that down. And just it play through. It doesn't sound so good in your clip. You're not sure where to find it. That is awesome. So syncing up like that is just going to save so much time when I don't have to, you know, go through, manually look at stuff, make sure it's all lined up. The fact that it can do it for you, awesome and super helpful. One of the things on my list here that I should have led with is that if you buy the studio version for a limited time, they're going to give you that little, uh, that little uh, speed editor. What? Mind blown. Dude, I wish I could go back and get that speed editor. For 300 bucks, you're getting the program and that little speed editor. That is awesome. And if you haven't seen that, I'll throw some images up on the screen here, what it looks like. Um, pretty cool. I mean, it could definitely help speed up your workflow for sure. So if you've been thinking about upgrading to studio, dude, now's the time to do it. Like just stop the video here and go get studio, right? Because if you're going to get that little thing included in the price of the program, that's awesome. 300 bucks for the program itself is an awesome deal. And to get that little uh, speed editor, dude, that's awesome. Mind blown. What? I wish they would give uh, those of us who already bought DaVinci Resolve, they would send that out to us, you know what I mean? Hey, Blackmagic Design, uh, I would love to try it out if um, you're interested in sending me one. <laughs> but since that speed editor is included, getting the studio version and upgrading to me is a no-brainer. So definitely, if you got the 300 bucks, go and definitely upgrade to the studio version. All right, the next one that I think is really cool is something called Magic Mask. And uh, Photoshop has things like this where it kind of selects the subject for you. I mean, I'm a photography guy, so I know a lot of the Photoshop Lightroom stuff. But that's kind of, I feel like, what is happening here with this magic mask. You're basically going to click on whatever it is you want to auto-select or auto-mask. And in this case, a lot of times it's going to work good for people. So let's jump into Resolve. I'm going to show you how auto-mask works here in the color tab. Super cool feature. All right, so I'm going to take my clip here of me just sitting at my desk. We're going to jump over into the color tab here. Click on the color tab. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new node with option or alt S. And now I want to start working with this magic mask. So let's make a little more room on the screen here. Change the size of things a little bit. Turn off these clips. We don't need that. All right, there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so if we look at this icon right here, that is the magic mask icon. And if you come down here, there's all kinds of options. I'm not going to cover all of it now because uh, honestly, I don't even know all of it yet. Still got to learn it. But I want to show you how it works here. So let's say uh, we want to select... You want to select features or you want to select a person. And for me, in this case, doing a person. So I'm going to come over here, select the plus eyedropper icon. And all you have to do is click and draw a line on whatever it is you want to select. So I'm going to draw one on my face there. And then DaVinci Resolve is going to go ahead and find basically me. And then it's going to mask that out. So if you want to see what is it selecting, you can come over here and choose some of these options here. You got this, which is toggle mask overlay. So if I go ahead and turn that on, you're going to see it selected me. And I mean, man, I did a pretty good job. Um, you know, we can adjust some of the settings down here to kind of make the quality better, maybe clean up the edges and that kind of stuff. But man, that does a pretty good job of just selecting me pretty quick, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and let's just see if we make a change. What does that look like? So I'm going to jump over into our color wheels over here and you're going to notice this stuff looks a lot different and we're going to get into all that uh, as we move forward here. So many good features here. 
But let's say I wanted to change the color of me. I don't know, let's just grab uh, the offset and let's just drag it this way a little bit. And my computer's pretty slow here, so uh, the response time is a little, little lacking. But um, you'll see that we made some changes here. Look, boom, changed just me and everything in that mask. I think this is going to be really helpful to edit specific things like skin tones or to track somebody across the screen. I think that it's got a lot of pros and a lot of great things that you're going to be able to do using this uh, magic mask tool. And if you come in back into the magic mask tool, you can actually track forward and track backward um, so that the mask will follow you wherever you might go. Now, my computer doesn't have a ton of power here, so I don't even know how all these will run on here. Uh, honestly, I'm going to have to try it out and play with it and see how it works out. But um, awesome, awesome tools here that are going to be super helpful working in DaVinci Resolve. All right. I know I'm blowing through these pretty quick here. It's just a little exciting, man, going through all this stuff. I can't wait to dig into it a little bit more. But the last one that I want to talk about here is Smart Reframe. So this one's only available in the studio version. But again, if you're going to pay 300 bucks, you get the program, the full version. It's going to run better for you. You can get that little uh, speed editor. That's going to be included for a limited time. And you're going to get this tip here, which is the Smart Reframe. So let's jump into Resolve. I'm going to show you how that works. So let's say maybe you wanted to make a, an Instagram post or something. What you would do is edit your video in your normal timeline. And then I'm going to need to crop it. But instead of making a, a new timeline and then... You know, maybe I got to move my clip around if I'm moving around the frame or something. DaVinci Resolve can actually do all that for you, hence Smart Reframe. So let's come up here. I'm going to click on my timeline, right click, and I'm going to duplicate this just so I have another copy here. I'm going to right click on my timeline, come to Timelines and Timeline Settings. So now I'm going to come down. I'm going to uncheck Use Project Settings, and I'm going to change this. So let's say for Instagram, I want to do a portrait video. Actually, let's see if they have it in here. 1080 by 350. Do they got that? Doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. 1350. I don't know if I said 350 or whatever. It's 1350. So once you get your resolution set there, the size you want your video to be, or your timeline in this case, go ahead, come down to mismatch resolution. Click on that. And you want to change that to scale full frame with crop. And then go ahead and hit OK. Now I want to open up this timeline, so I'm going to double click it. So you can see my video is the size I want it to be, but I'm kind of not centered in there. And especially if I was moving around the frame, it's not going to be lined up. So come on over, open your inspector. Come on down to Smart Reframe right here. We're going to open that. And Object of Interest, we can do Auto, try that. Or you can pick a reference point. Uh, so let's say uh, my reference point is uh, right there. It's my face. So I'm going to hit Reframe, and it's going to automatically analyze the clip and make sure that that stays within the frame. All right, once it's done analyzing the clip there, it may take a little while, it took my computer a little while because it's old and slow. But once you play through, you see I'm right in the middle of the screen and the area that I wanted to track or be focused on is my face and that works out perfectly. And it should work out good too if you're moving say outside and you're moving around, it should track you pretty well. So that feature is super cool. It just helps cut down some of the work that you gotta do here in DaVinci Resolve if you wanna make a different format for your video. You don't have to worry about tracking everything around. It'll do it for you. Pretty sweet. And the last thing I want to talk about is just some changes on how the inspector looks. We use the inspector all the time and the way it looks now, I think it's uh, pretty intuitive, pretty straightforward. But let's just take a quick look and see what we got. All right, so looking at the inspector here, it does look different than it did in version 16. So across the top, we have different items here that we can select. So we have a section for video, audio, effects, transitions, images, and files. And if you scroll down, we have a lot of the same tools here. We also have some new tools, such as the Smart Reframe that we just talked about. We also have speed change tools here that you can use to change the speed of your clip. You can then jump into audio stuff. And we used to have the video and audio uh, little tabs, I guess, at the top. But this is way more intuitive. It just makes a lot more sense when you look at it real quick, especially if you're just getting started in DaVinci Resolve. Then effects is going to be any effects you apply to your clips such as any of the open effects or anything from the effects library. Uh, transitions, pretty straightforward. You can make adjustments to transitions if you have any on your clips. Images, you can adjust images however you want. And file, you've got information about your specific file. All right, guys, and check. That covers the last one I wanted to talk about in this video. So tons of cool features. I think they added over like 300 uh, features here in the new version of DaVinci Resolve 17 here. So head on over, check out the beta version, and uh, I haven't had any problems with it yet. It's been working out pretty good, but tons of great stuff. We'll talk about it as we move ahead here. I hope you're as excited about DaVinci Resolve 17 as I am, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace. You can go check out some more DaVinci Resolve videos up there. See what YouTube recommends down there, or uh, subscribe right over here. <laughs>